How's it going Forex traders? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Dapo Willis and guys, today is another episode of Trader Talk. A very long anticipated episode. It's been a minute, I know, I'm sorry, but I'm back now. Now, if you're just joining me for the first time, once again, my name is Dapo Willis and Trader Talk is basically a segment of my YouTube channel where I come to practice what I preach. Most traders don't do that, by the way. <laughs> so I come on here and I use all the teachings that I teach on my YouTube channel from top-down analysis to how to use your Fibonacci properly, how to use your trend lines. I put together all the things you know about trading. I simplify it and I use it to analyze the market, project the market so that we can ultimately what make some money and make some, put some damn money in our pockets, right? Make redraw. So the essence of Trader Talk is to what analyze the the markets look for entries and potential exit points and ultimately redraw so redraw money so that we can put money in our pockets so guys before i jump into my screen i'd like to first of all apologize for being away from trader talks for being away from the charts for so long the reason this happened is because i mean we had a couple of uh, i think AUD USD was my pair of pref preferent we were expecting it to drop massively However, the market just kept on pulling back and pulling back. It will drop, it will pull back. Now, I didn't want to keep coming on here to keep telling you guys about AUDUSD because not a lot of people can stomach, um, not a lot of people can be in a trade for as long as I can. Not because I have more money, it's just because of my the way my brain is, is set up. If I see a trade and I'm very sure about what the trade is going to do, I can be in that trade for as long as it takes for the market to go in my favor but a lot of people cannot really do that so i just didn't want to distract people i wanted to stay away from the youtube for a bit and literally just focus on holding on to my AUD USD trades which have which i've been holding on for the longest which i'm going to show you guys right about now so I'm going to jump into my screen, but before I do that, I want to say a big shout out to all the Forex Mastery students. I've missed you guys. I love you guys very much. And I'm here. I'll never leave you guys. I'm always here for you guys. If you've bought the Forex Mastery program, best believe that Dapper Willis will always come on here to hold your hand and show you what exactly is going to happen next. Sometimes it is necessary for you to take some time away from the chart so that you can come back refreshed. Now, if you're one of those traders who have taken some time off the charts to do other things, before you jump into the market, I advise that you go over the Forex Mastery program again. Now, what this will help you do is it would remind you as to how exactly the top-down analysis works. What this will actually do for you, it is it will make you sharp all over again. Yes. So before I jump, before I'm about, be, rather before today, before I'm obviously about to do this analysis, what I did was I went over all my previous trades. Most of them were winners anyways. Went over them, went over the Forex Mastery program, looked at everything again. And I feel very, very sharp. Just looking at the charts, I know exactly what the market is going to do next. Now, for those of you guys who haven't grabbed the Forex Mastery program and are looking for the best approach to the Forex market, you're looking for something to guide you. Once again, the link to the Forex Mastery program will be in the description or around here somewhere. It's very inexpensive. It's just $99. Do yourself a favor, grab it so that you can look at the market just like how I do and ultimately make a lot of money so without any further ado i have some juicy technical stuff that i want to share with you guys do not go anywhere sit down right there and let's jump into the screen let's go welcome 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 traders welcome inside of my screen um obviously guys you know the drill before i jump into my charts and show you guys all these juicy setups and how to make money um in the coming weeks you need to do me one favor actually you need to do yourself one favor right there which is to smash the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on fantastic uh analysis like this that could potentially make you a lot of money in the forex market so i'm going to give you five seconds to do that so you got five smash the subscribe button four three two one subscribe right there right there right there all right guys let's jump into the video let's go now <clears throat> What I obviously you guys know my favorite pair is AUD USD at the moment. Um, so I'm gonna kick things off with AUD USD. Now, once again, I'd like to apologize. Like I said in the intro of the video, I'd like to honestly apologize for not giving you guys as much trader talk videos as you guys would like to have. The reason why I wasn't producing as much trader talk videos is because I wanted to allow the market breathe. Uh, I noticed that we had 
clear directions. However, the market kept on jumping back. So for every time we tried to jump into AUD USD, um, the market kept on pulling back. Just when we thought we were clear to the downside, the market would just jump back and stuff like that. So um, I noticed that the market just wasn't ready. Sometimes the market just isn't ready. It probably wants to go fulfill some technical levels, and I'll show you guys in the charts very soon. Sometimes it just wants to go fulfill some technical levels, and you just need to allow it be. Because if you keep standing in the way of the market, it will keep hitting your stop losses. Now, I have some previous trades that I placed on AUDUSD, some really uh, early entries, which are still floating at the moment. They're still open, so I'm technically still making money from AUDUSD. However, some of the trades that I placed inside of the range, which I'm going to be showing you guys pretty shortly, um, got stopped out, um, which is probably my first loss in for the year, probably my first loss in a long time. And it's one of those things at the end of the day, if the market just isn't ready, you have to cut your losses short and then move on. So that's exactly what we did. So we closed some of the trades out um, before it actually stopped us out because I noticed that this market just wasn't interested in falling at the time but we kept our earlier trades open so before i jump into um the lower time frames to show you guys actually let me just show you guys what i was talking about in terms of entries and exits and all that all, all of that jazz right so i'll just quickly go over to my daily time frame so that we can have a look to see what exactly is happening so you guys all know that the idea the idea behind AUD USD was for us to roll over to the downside, which is 0 0.1920. Um, and once again, guys, it's very important for me to come on here and show you guys when good things go great and when things don't go so great. This is very important because it helps you guys form a better, better knowledge base in terms of the fact that if things are not going well, it's important to know why exactly it didn't go well so that if you're ever confronted with a situation like this, you know how best to handle it. You get what I mean? There's no point trying to act like everything is all rosy when everything isn't rosy. This is the ver as far as I'm concerned, you learn more from when things don't go well than when things actually go well. But not to worry. Um, I'll show you guys some more trading opportunities. Jump into the charts. There's always a lot of money to be made in the market. That's why I like the forex market. We have so many opportunities, which I'm going to be sharing with you guys. But obviously, I need to explain to you guys what happened with AUD USD uh, so that we can move on. Now, obviously, we um, my early entries were somewhere at the top here. Um, obviously, once we had this push up and then break of counter trend line, which is here. Which was here. So my <coughs> my entries, my first entries were somewhere about here. I just want to zoom this in right about here. So my early entries were somewhere around here. And then we started to fall. You guys know how I like to trade. Um, and then we started to pull back, jump into another entry, expecting the market to roll over to the downside. As you can see, several attempts, several attempts to the downside. And just when we thought we had cleared this range right about here, you know, cleared to the downside. And then it was it was a no brainer. It was supposed to come on the way to the downside. The market started to jump all the way to the upside again. And then obviously rallied all the way to the upside and stopped out my trades that were inside of the range. However, still kept the other ones open as we speak. Now, like I said, the reason why I wasn't constantly updating you guys is because of how long it took for this trade to actually break out and for this trade to actually go in our direction. It took a very long time. And not a lot of traders have uh, the ability to stomach being in a trade for such a long time and then it doesn't play out. A lot of traders tend to get scared. They tend to run away. Um, so I didn't want to instill any fear in anybody. I just wanted you guys to carry on doing what you're doing. I was going to hold on to my trades and I was going to stick to my rules. And I didn't want to carry you guys on a journey whereby, you know, at the end of the day, you guys be like, oh, I wish I'd done this and I wish I'd done that. So I wanted you guys to hopefully take some time out of the market to see what exactly was happening from a bigger picture time frame to see what exactly was going on, you know, and most importantly, I needed to allow AUDUS to give me a clear direction. So what I did was we closed out our trades that were inside just around here, just before we hit stop losses, closed out the trade and then allow the market to do what exactly you wanted to do now from what i can see moving on so i have some trades open at the, at, at the early stage about here so from what i can see from actually we have to go to a higher time frame to see what exactly is happening so i want to give you guys a little tip here eh? so if you for for any reason you're in a particular time frame and the market just seems to be moving sideways you don't really understand what exactly is going on it is always advisable for you to scale to the higher time frame to see what exactly is going on just so that you can have 
a better perspective of what exactly is happening. So on AUD USD, I can still see clearly that this market is very bearish. We're still trading below this trend line, as you can see, very, very clearly tra trading below this trend line. So it's very possible that AUD USD wanted was just not ready to drop, right? It just wasn't ready to drop. Sometimes that happens, right? So um, but I noticed something which is very interesting. If you notice with all the push-ups, push-ups, even when we come and try and break this yellow bar, we always come and close down back below it. We try and always come and close that back down below this level. This level is actually a supply region. Now, you guys know the way I like to trade, very simple and straightforward. As long as we are below this supply region, okay? And another reason why AUDUSD was unable to fall the way it should have dropped is because the euro became bullish you guys know that euro is an uh, the, the euro is inverse to the dollar index right so the dollar index was falling the euro was gaining strength so because of the fact that the dollar wasn't strengthening the australian dollar obviously was not able the, the, we didn't have enough dollar strength to pull this guy down that's just what it was. We didn't have enough dollar strength to pull this guy down every time we tried to come down uh, from Aussie weakness. There wasn't just enough dollar strength to carry it to the ups to the downside. Instead, we started to see um, dollar weakness, and then AUDUS was just gaining strength. So it was an absolute mess. It was just a, uh, I mean, the dollar was just messing up pretty much, and that's exactly why we couldn't drop. However, in as much as that was happening, I also noticed that. Uh, AUD USD was unable to breach this level about here. Now, here is a lesson in all of this. You see, anytime I plot my levels, I never like to remove them. I always like to keep them because it serves as a reference point. For example, look at this. For every time we try to break here, we've been unable to break it. What this means is this guy is still holding strong. Just because we haven't come lower yet doesn't mean we're not going to come lower eventually. Because if this market wanted to head higher, we would have taken out this level a long time ago. So for me, this is a reference point. And for the fact that we have tried and tried to tr trade above it and it's not happening, I am still of the strong belief that eventually this market is definitely going to uh, this market is definitely going to roll over. Where's my f I have one tool that I like to use these days. Hold on, guys. Uh, where's my bloody tool? Hold on, guys. Uh, come on, can't find it. Oh yeah, found it. Okay, just because we have not collapsed to the downside doesn't mean that AUDUS is not going to do that in the future. At the moment, the market just needs some more momentum to the downside. Now, once again, the reason I say this is because of this yellow bar. And if you come on the daily time frame, you will notice something similar as well. Okay, hold on, I'm going to adjust this. You will notice something similar as well. Look at all the times we've tested it. Even when we came to break it, we still came and closed down back, back down below it. Came back here, we've tested it again, and we're currently testing it again. Ladies and gentlemen, as long as we sustain below this yellow bar, I see no reason why we shouldn't come lower. But as we speak, AUDUSD needs to figure itself out. I will be watching this pair very closely, maybe for a break of this counter trend line to the downside. And then obviously, you know, first level targets must always come at the base of this level, which is somewhere around here. Actually, I'll move it up a bit just in case we want to form a right shoulder, which is here. So break of this counter trend line, we should see this green bar. And if you break this green bar, we should be heading all the way to the downside. I see no reason why that shouldn't happen. However, if we break this yellow bar, then we'll have to do a whole new analysis for AUDUSD. But as we speak from what price action is indicating, from what the technicals is saying to me, as long as we sustain below this yellow bar, we are looking to the downside. So that's AUDUSD in a nutshell. Not much to say about this. My first early trades are still open from this. I'm still holding on to it. Um, and then obviously we'll see how things go. So that's it for AUDUSD. Let's jump over to the euro just to see what's happening in the euro. Now, the euro is the main catalyst for why the pairs that were anticipating to jump to drop to the downside did not happen. The euro was strengthening out of the blues. Most people didn't know why. I figured it out. Why exactly were we strengthening? So it's a very simple equation, right? We collapsed all the way to the downside. We actually collapsed just past parity. 
Now, for those of you guys who do not know what parity is, parity is basically um, parity is basically when the market drops into 1.00, so meaning that the euro is equal to the dollar. So we did drop into parity. We made a lot of money from here, so much money, so, so, so much money. And then obviously we came into parity. We broke below it just because we wanted to test this level right about here. And as you can see, we pinned it just really nicely and we started to jump all the way to the upside. Now, <clears throat> Ideally, this is a downtrend. This is a pullback, and we should start dropping back to the downside. However, um, the market had broken back into this range. Had broken back into this range. Not only did we break back into this range, we had tested the base of this range, and we started pointing to the upside. And once that happened, I knew that uh, uh, Euro USD was bullish. Now, just because Euro USD was bullish, if Euro USD is bullish, you will take AUD USD with it. You will take GBP USD with it. You will take any dollar base pair with it because why the euro dollar is what the opposite of the dollar index so if the euro dollar is gaining strength the dollar index is weakening and if the dollar is weakening gbp usd will go up aud usd will go up euro usd will go up and so on and so forth ndd usd will go up so just because that's why i keep telling people that if you can get your analysis right on the euro usd or the dollar index most other pairs are most likely going to what fall in line now we have the euro in front of what so what exactly is next for the euro what do i think is going to happen to the euro so if i just zoom out pretty nicely just to see what exactly is going on with the euro i'm just going to try and throw some trend lines on a higher time frame just to see what exactly is going on now as you can see as you can see very clearly we have broken out of so we so we were underneath this trend line we were above it and then we came back below it trading below it once we were below it the market was bearish we we're expecting actually i was expecting us to pull back into this trend line and drop however the market wasn't having it so look closely guys we have broken above this trend line we have tested this is a tweezer bottom monthly time frame tweezer bottom don't play with it don't play with it don't play with it don't play with it okay it's very important like it's a serious guy twitter bottom at a major support level bouncing off of this trend line so this is literally a breakout retest continuation to the upside so this is exactly why the euro is bullish as we speak now the question is how bullish is the euro going to go because technically we have a high lower low we have a high we have a low this is a lower high from here and this is a clear lower low from here so technically overall on the monthly time frame we're still bearish however we are we medium term we are bullish so medium term how far is the euro going to climb how high is the euro going to climb and how can we potentially take make make money from the euro climbing high obviously medium term so once again in order for us to deduce what exactly is happening we'll have to throw on some trend lines as we speak this is a new touch this is a new point of the trend line actually if i want to do this the right way you have to join the dots and then wherever wherever we come from we come from wherever we come from we come from right so from what i can see um the outer trend line so this is the inner trend line which has been broken so this is the new trend line that is currently in play for the euro dollar right so i mean we have so much space to the upside so ideally i would expect the euro to rally into somewhere about here so 1.1455 will be an ideal area for the euro to rally into now this is from a monthly time frame perspective i'll need to come down to a weekly time frame to adjust these levels properly now as you can see from a weekly time frame perspective you see why i like to trade on obviously do my analysis on higher time frame because everything just lines up this guy is a major resistance best belief i just identified it on the monthly and as you can see on the weekly everything lines up pretty nicely now the reason i say this is a very key level is i was trading this market back in 2015 and i know how many times we try to buy for it to breach this level every time it just kept on coming down we came down with all finally you go up it wasn't happening so i remember this level very well so best believe it is a strong level right so as we speak um the euro is currently trading below it so obviously this is this this temporarily for a temporary trend this market is made a high high this market has made a high a low a higher high a higher low and it's about to make obviously it's made a higher high so right now the euro is bullish so it's, it's doing all the 
it's, it's possessing all the characteristics of an uptrend now like we said how high is the euro going to go so my first level target for the euro will be 1.1455 um, that's really cool and interesting if I come to the daily time frame to see where we can see some potential pullbacks into I will just take out this my yellow zone right about here and just try and anticipate where I feel we can come into at worst case we would deep into this demand zone somewhere around here if I take my trend lines and I draw them correctly this is this market is lining up somewhere around here although this market is quite linear I'm not going to use this trend line as a basis for anything so we're currently trading above here this market is not just going to jump off from here why why do I say so because you want to look at all the previous swings they're quite big they're quite big so it might come in for a quite big one before we carry all the way to the upside once again history always leaves clues so i'll be expecting a bigger pullback if i come to the four hour time frame just to see what exactly is happening just try and play around on the lower time frame just to see how potentially we can jump into this i will need the euro to pull back a bit more although this yellow bar seems to be looking pretty decent but i don't think this is a strong enough demand zone i feel like this is a better demand zone so i'll be watching the euro for some potential um movement to the downside before we can start picking it up to the upside so either way i am bullish on the euro um all the way up to 1.1455 you heard it here first on dapsy radio you heard it here first on dapsy radio guys <laughs> sorry guys I'm, I'm a bit intense today because you know i'm just looking at the charts serious business here money is on the line so you know you gotta make money bro you gotta make some money man anyway so yeah um I'm, I'm expecting the euro to pull back a bit further into things just so that we can have a clear base because the last thing you want to do is start buying prematurely and then the market is still in retracement mode so that's it for the euro usd in a nutshell no nothing really ready to go obviously you're still going to see people on instagram trying to buy and sell they don't really know what they're doing at the end of the day um because the market doesn't really have it's not ready to roll yet if you want to sell you're not 100 percent sure you might come here if you start selling start going up stop loss if you start buying and it starts coming down stop loss so you need to allow the market tell you when it is ready so it needs to form a proper base either at this level or at this level before i will be interested so we've covered AUD USD, okay still bearish on this and the reason why AUD USD might not fall immediately like i said guys the euro is still is still looking to the upside so it will take a very very weak aussie dollar rather yeah, yeah it will take a very weak aussie dollar this aussie dollar um to see this drop off so we might play around this range for quite a bit quite a bit quite a bit so let me just put this here so that you guys can see so we'll play around here for quite a bit probably come now but i'd like to see us bleed down once we start to bleed down i'll look for potential entries um right about here so guys that's the euro um as you can see on the weekly time frame it's very straightforward very smooth um very nice i see no reason why um come down a bit it doesn't necessarily need to come and touch the base here but i would like to see at least a week around here at least fulfill this demand zone because this is actually a demand zone this market started to rally all the way from the to the upside from here so i'll be expecting a pullback from the euro before we head to the upside and then uh gbp usd same thing as the euro same thing we were expecting us to collapse from here down collapse from here down however the market had other plans instead it came out from the base here and started to head all the way to the upside what do i think is going to happen for gbp usd next next level target 1.3 1 1.3881 1 why if you look left simple straightforward this level is a key level guys no no i know this level is a key level this candle is Brexit. I was trading on this day. I was in trading floor in Canary Wharf. I was in London at the time. It's 2016 summer. Um, I came here, held, held, bam. When we came out, struggled, struggled. Even when we broke it, tested it, came up here. Once we came back below it, it was a one touch, two touch, three touch, four touch, five touch. On top of it, six touch, seven touch. 
definitely guy you have to it's gonna respect here so if you're bullish on gbp usd be careful around this region um if you want to jump in it's not too late to jump in you just need to find a potential pullback region for you guys to jump in um i'm gonna have i have this one right about here because i feel like this is probably a better demand zone if i come on a weekly time frame just to see where this candle took off from yeah so we have a bullish engulfing candle that took off from here so ideally i would expect to see gbp usd pull into 1.2 uh six five seven once we can pull into here i see no reason why we shouldn't push to the upside and that should definitely be in line with this trend line if i'm not mistaken correct so we'll have a nice wheel zone setup about here for gbp usd actually out of everything i feel like gbp usd is the pair that i'll most likely be interested in at the moment we're still hanging on here why because of this little playing games right about here okay for our time frame let's have a look <clears throat> so we'll see but I, i'll be more interested in gbp usd because i feel like here is a bit too the, the retracement isn't significant enough to be honest um i would like to see us roll over a bit or at least from a double base here at least coming to here before i start looking for buy opportunities so at the moment what's actually happening across board is the market is coming into key region so that we can have potential trading opportunities before we let before we fire you guys know me i only like to go for the very very best trades because once i touch it i'm go i'm not just going for small five percent ten percent i'm going for 30% return on investment. I'm going for a minimum of 400 pips, 500 pips. So I want the very best trade only. And last but not the least, the S&P 500. Do you see at the moment, um, I can foresee this the American stock market forming brand new highs. So you headed here first on Dapsy Radio. The American stock market will be hitting new highs, brand new highs, fresh highs, all-time highs very soon. Um, I remember doing this prediction a long time ago, uh, but the market was taking forever to do whatever it wanted to do. So I see no reason why S&P 500 should not rally into 6,200. Um, <sighs> yeah. So what's going to happen is I'm going to expect, rather I'm going to watch out for a break of this level about here. S&P 500 loves the Fibonacci play. Excuse me. It loves the Fibonacci play. Loves it. What's this? I need my bloody Fibonacci, bro. As you can see, simple A, B, C, D leg will probably complete somewhere around here. So somewhere in the middle. So it's the 50%. Um, so if we can take out 4,815 basis points on the S&P 500, the next level target will be 5,440. And then after that, 6,000. 6,000 will take a long time to get there. Um, but at the moment, what are the trading opportunities? How can we take advantage of this? So the S&P 500 was a very easy one. As you can see, we just came, came down, came down, came down, came down, formed a base. And then we came and formed a left, obviously this was the left shoulder, formed the right shoulder. And then we just started to make our way uh, to the upside from then. Okay, so S&P 500, I see no reason why we shouldn't come into 4815. Um, if I come to the daily time frame, we're, appro we're approaching some form of resistance, which is here. But I see no reason why we shouldn't take it out if I come on a four hour time frame. Um, yep, give me a second. Give me so you see that I don't really like trading this S&P 500 because the the waves are ugly. <laughs> the waves are ugly. It's so ugly and it makes it so difficult for um, traders to obviously pinpoint where the retracement is going to be. So what I like to do in situations like this is I just like to watch just to see. So this was where the breakout started from. I will just be monitoring this for a potential pullback. So if you want to understand how a pullback might potentially form, look at how pullbacks have formed before in the past. This is exactly what they look like. They're not too big. They just come back for a bit. So yeah, I'll be looking for a pullback that looks exactly like this somewhere around here so that we can push all the way to the upside to 4,115. And if we break that, we have all the way to the upside. So 
Um, yeah, S&P 500, I have no doubt in my mind, um, except we have some obviously macroeconomic issues, factors in the US. Obviously, this is based on the US stock market. So yeah, that's pretty much it. So once again, guys, uh, just a quick recap, AUD USD, I'm still looking, still holding, um, still, you know, hopeful that we do, do get a push to the downside. Um, I'm judging everything based on price action and technical analysis. This is exactly what the market is telling me. As you guys know me, I always stick to my rules. Whatever the market tells me, price action is telling me I will follow my rules, okay? And then we have the euro, which we're expecting a potential pullback for some further upside. Um, and then we've got GBP USD, who is approaching dangerously approaching target and i see no reason why we shouldn't push into it so looking for buy opportunities are the euro and gbp usd as well and then s p 500 as well so we're all looking for buy opportunities across the euro gbp usd and the s p 500 not to worry i'll be coming on here to give you guys potential updates as to what i feel the market's going to do next before i jump into any trade but before i go let's look at euro jpy and gbp jpy these pairs are clear they are clear they are gone. They are coming here. GBP JPY is clear. It's coming here. They are clear, guys. They are clear. So if you're a type who trades GBP JPY, Euro JPY, just wait for some form of a pullback or watch this consolidation around here and jump in. Buy. You're clear. Because Euro is bullish. GBP USD is bullish. USD JPY is bullish. Why not? JPY seems to be very weak at the moment. So why not? But I don't really like to trade it that much. And one last thing, oil prices. So if oil takes out $82 a barrel, we're gone. So once I see a bullish engulfing candle, actually, guys, let me not give you guys too much information right here. Let's see what happens in market unfolds. I'm happy to be back. More Trader Talk videos. I don't catch you guys in my subsequent videos. Okay, before the oil. $82 a barrel if we break here. Psh. But we'll see how it goes. I'll be back here same time next week just to see how the market has played out if we have any opportunities. Guys, you see, I like to give the market time. Do take your time. Do what you need to do. Present the best. I want the best opportunity. I'm not in a hurry. I'm not in a hurry. <laughs> I got money, so I'm not in a hurry. And the people who actually make money in this market are the people that have money and are not in a hurry. Now, if you're watching this and you don't really have money, that doesn't mean you can't make money. But when you have money, money affords you patience you can be patient and honestly the traders who make the most amount of this money in this market the most amount of money in this market are the patient guys so if you can have you don't have to have money to have a patience mindset you don't have to have money physical cash you have an abundance mindset it's just a, it's mental hack you gotta be patient with the market i'm gonna give it a week just to see what exactly happens and i'll revisit it and see if we're right for us to go once again my name is dapo willis and i'll catch you in my other screen See you soon. Let's go. Thank you guys and thank you so much for staying till the very end of this video. You know I love you guys very much as always. Um, I'll catch you guys in my subsequent videos. Once again, if you haven't already subscribed, ensure to do that. Smash the subscribe button right there. And for those of you guys who haven't grabbed the Forex Mastery program, the link is going to be around here somewhere or in the description right about there. I love you guys very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'll see you guys. Take it easy and peace out.